Before we jump into the episode today, I want to share something with you from my heart. First of all, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I really can't tell you how much your support means to me. We've been doing the podcast now for almost four years. I can't even believe it. And I'm so grateful for each and every single one of you that listens, shares an episode with your friends, sends me a DM or a text message letting me know how an episode resonates with you or any aha moments. Seriously, I couldn't be more grateful to be able to create this podcast. It has been such a blessing in my life and I love hearing the ways it's been able to provide value in yours as well. One thing you might not know is how much work it takes to be consistent with a podcast. In fact, did you know that the majority of podcasts don't make it past episode number 10? And we are well, 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 well beyond that. And it's just a lot thinking of the episodes, recording them, editing them, managing the guests, making sure that everything runs smoothly and gets uploaded consistently and regularly. And so that's why I have created an amazing opportunity for you to support the podcast monetarily. And in exchange for that, you will get exclusive premium subscriber content. So for as little as $3 a month, you can become a premium subscriber subscriber of the podcast. And every month I will upload new voice guided workouts and breathwork meditation audio for you. So that way you can work out with me coaching you in your ears. You can also take a moment to reduce your stress and relax and come down and ground down with one of my breathwork audios. So if that is on your heart to support the podcast for as little as $3 a month to become a premium podcast subscriber, I can't tell you how much that means to me and the growth of this podcast. I appreciate you. If you're interested, click the link in the description, become a premium podcast subscriber, new content every month. And while supplies last, I'll send you an exclusive podcast coffee mug so you can have your self-love and sweat coffee every morning. I appreciate you. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to Self Love and Sweat, the podcast, the place where you'll get inspired to live your life unapologetically, embrace your perfect imperfections, break down barriers, and do what sets your soul on fire. I'm your host, London Souza. Hey friend, it's me, London Souza, online lifestyle transformation coach. I help people all over the world just like you who know they are meant for more, get their mind right and their body tight and go from crazy busy to crazy happy. And hey, if it's our first time meeting, welcome. So happy to have you. And if you've been with us for a while, it's so great that you're here too. I'm really excited to share this episode of the Self Love and Sweat podcast with you. How I got into fitness and how it became my career. That's what I'm going to talk to you guys about on this episode. And it was actually the number one question that you guys asked me when I reached out on social media and I was like, hey guys, you know, I'm going to start a podcast. Which questions do you have? What topics would you like me to cover? This was one of the top, actually the top question that you guys asked me. So this is for you. Thanks so much for your guys' questions. And I just want to let you know that the door is always open. You can always reach out to me on social media at Life Like London on all platforms and let me know if you have an idea for a podcast episode or a topic or a question that you want me to cover, okay? This is for you guys, so I want to make sure that I create content that you guys want and that you guys find valuable. So yeah, let's talk about my fitness journey. I had a lot of fun thinking about this episode and kind of planning uh, planning out this episode kind of like the episode about moving abroad because you get to go back on all of these moments in time 
and you get to kind of relive how you felt during those times. And despite the struggle, despite how hard it might have been, despite the setback, you get to kind of understand that all of it had its place in your past. And without it, you wouldn't be where you are today. So I think this is a great question for people who are just considering going after, you know, their dream career, their dream job. Um, Or even if you're like, oh, I want to be in fitness and I want to kind of do what you do, London. Hopefully this sheds light on the fact that the path is not linear, that it's not easy, and that a lot of the hardships, the ups and downs and all of that, they have their purpose and it's all part of the journey. So yeah, I feel like I should start from my childhood and try to go all the way through till right now. Um, and I think I can do that in, you know, I try to keep these episodes like between 25 and 40 minutes um, or that's how it's been so far. But I think I can do it. Um, you know, I'm not going to drag it out, but I'll put all the important po- uh, the important points, the valuable points in here and hopefully make you laugh a little bit, make you motivated, make you inspired and um, overall provide value. So when I was a kid, um, we were always really active as a family. So my mom and dad actually met in aerobics class. My mom was an aerobics instructor. Now she's a hairstylist, but at the time she was an aerobics instructor and my dad was in the aerobics class and that's how they met. And that's how they, yeah, fell in love. And I just kind of laugh at that story a little bit because I can just imagine in the eighties, you know, in those cool eighties workout clothes, doing the step aerobics, you know, side to side with the music. And just, I can just only imagine like, yeah, how cool that was and how cool of a time. And I'm just so thankful that, yeah, my parents got together because, hey, that's how I was made. And um, yeah, so my parents met in aerobics class. And then my whole life, we were really active as a family. I would go ride my bike next to my mom while she'd go for a run. My dad was a baseball and football coach and a PE teacher. I played sports um, as a kid all the way up uh, through high school. I played soccer, softball. I ran track. I um, was a cheerleader. So we were really active as a family and we never, I don't ever remember it being like, oh, we have to work out to be fit. You know, it was just kind of like, that's what we did. And growing up, I played, like I said, a lot of sports and for me, like I was pretty good at sports. Like I definitely wasn't like the best of the best, but I was pretty good at soccer and at softball. And definitely really good at cheerleading. I loved that a lot. But what I loved the most was the community and like all my friends, we all played together, you know. Um, I'm still friends with a lot of those people today. And so it was more for me, you know, it was fun. We were together. We played sports together. We played school sports together. We played like competitive league together. In America, there's a a variety of different like sports teams and types and leagues, let's say, for 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 both boys and girls, but, um, for girls for sure. And, um, so yeah, we would play like school soccer together. Then we'd play competitive soccer together. And then we'd play softball when it was softball season. And so it was like my group of friends and just like what we did, you know, so fitness or let's say sports was a big part of my life and being active, you know, we would, we spend hours and hours outside rollerblading, you know, playing games, making up dances, just a lot of activity overall in Yeah, I would say a lot of activity overall that didn't really have anything to do with like being fit, losing weight, staying in shape. It was just fun. It was just fun. And then fast forward, when I was 17 years old, I packed up all my things in my Toyota Corolla. Uh, the same, yeah, my, my first car that I had that I talked to you guys about that I sold when I moved abroad. But I, I packed all my stuff in my Toyota Corolla and I drove to Long Beach State. I did really good academically in high school. And so I got accepted to Long Beach State, California. Uh, a few other colleges too, but I, I decided on Long Beach State And I decided that I was going to major in psychology. So just so that you guys know, um, I didn't always want to be a personal trainer, fitness professional, fitness model, and now lifestyle transformation coach. I actually went to school with the intention of becoming a forensic psychiatrist. I wanted to be a psychiatrist for serial killers, criminals. I wanted to work in a prison and I wanted to understand the criminal mind. That's what I wanted to do. Now that's still 
still really interesting to me. The mind overall and psychology overall is super interesting to me. And I still love to read, you know, books and um, watch documentaries about the criminal mind. And, um, but nonetheless, that's what I thought I wanted to do. So I went to Long Beach State, 17 years old, psychology major, never lived alone before. I'd always like, of course, lived with my parents. Um, I really found myself in a state of overwhelm. So I had never, you know, had to like manage a household, like do the dishes, you know, clean up after myself and me be the only one. I never did a load of laundry before. Um, And then managing going to school, going to all my classes, making sure the work was done, going to work, doing all the things. And I just found myself super overwhelmed. And just like a lot of college students, like I didn't, eat very well. I was drinking a lot and I was eating pizza and Mexican food for like every single meal. And I gained, I I never like, I don't remember specifically, but I'd say about 20 pounds, like 10 kilos, 20 pounds ish. And I just remember feeling like crap. I remember just kind of feeling overwhelmed with everything that was life at the moment. And it just like, yeah, wasn't working for me. And so I remember being in my apartment in Long Beach going for a run. I, like I said, I had done track before. So I'd like ran before I played soccer. So I ran before, but this was like the first time that I ever was like, okay, as a workout, you know, like as not just a sport where there's an outcome or a finish line and then you either win or you lose or you get first place, second place, third place, whatever. It was like, I just need to run to get outside, to get fresh air, to shake off the stress. You know, I needed breaks in between studying. I remember the first time I went for a run, I had been studying in my apartment for, I don't even know, like three, four, maybe five hours. And I just remember being like, I'm just going to get up and run. And I just put on my shoes, which I don't even know if they were running shoes. It was just like my active wear shoes that I had. And I just went out and ran. And I remember feeling so good. So, so, so good. I, yeah, I was sweating. I was out of breath and I just couldn't think about anything else except for the fact that I was running. It felt good. I was outside, fresh air. I didn't have a care in the world. Like all the things I was stressing about and thinking about uh, before I went for that run, it was just gone. And I was like, whoa, I really like that feeling. That was awesome. I'm going to do that again and again and again. And so I just started a regular running routine. I didn't know the proper running shoes or the running form or the proper breathing technique or anything. I just knew how to put one foot in front of the other and how to move my arms and move my legs and run. And that's what I did. And so that really, really helped me throughout that time. And it was just really a mental breakthrough for me. And then after that, so a couple of years later, I um, moved into a different house with my best friend, Allie, and then another really close friend of mine, Hilda. And at the time, she was a personal trainer and um, fitness model. And she was just kind of leading by example. She would go to the gym and work out on a regular basis. She was eating healthy. um, And I don't remember exactly if she like said, hey, London, do you want to come to the gym with me today? Or if I asked her, like, I don't really remember exactly how that went. But one way or another, her and I started working out together. She started including me in her workouts. And I remember we would go to 24-hour fitness, the gym by our house. And she would, yeah, teach me how to use the machine, showed me a bunch of different exercises. We would go work out um, pretty regularly, like multiple times a week. And then we would come home and she She would, you know, taught me about uh, nutrition and yeah, protein, carbs and fat and their role in nutrition and when to eat what. And just like basically was my fitness mentor, like to the fullest and was really there for me when I had any questions about exercises and what, you know, what muscle groups this worked or how to work this machine. Or she also taught me like about not training the same muscle group two days in a row because I probably would have been like squatting my brains out if I wanted to, you know, tone up my legs and tone up my glutes. But she talked to me, you know, about, okay, if you do legs today, then tomorrow do upper body so then your legs can rest. And just like basic stuff that was super, super powerful. And because of her and because of her including me in her workout time and just showing me 
the ropes, showing me the ropes, if you will, I completely fell in love with fitness. I fell in love with going to the gym, how it made me feel, my vibrant energy. And I also, quite frankly, fell in love with how it made me look. Like I said, I had gained about 20 pounds, 10 kilos, the freshman 15, they call them, but mine was definitely more than 15. Um, And yeah, I lost weight. I toned muscle. You know, I was starting to build what um, I would call like more of a woman's physique, if you will. So before I was just kind of, yeah, I was younger in my teenage years. Your body changes, you know, and and transforms a little bit in terms of, yeah, where you store fat and muscle and things like that. And so I really felt like, ooh, I'm, I'm turning into a woman, if that makes sense. I just, I don't know if that's even like, I mean... It's not just because you start working out that you turn into a woman. That's not what I mean. But I just remember that's what I felt. Like, I remember being like, whoa, like, I don't have that, like, little girl body anymore, you know? And I really like feeling strong and having a strong core and strong legs and strong arms. And yeah, it was just different. It was just different. And I liked it. I knew that I liked it. And so... Yeah, she definitely opened the door for me there. I'm so thankful for her and for the, that time that we had together. And from there, I decided that I wanted to become a personal trainer because at the time when I first got into fitness, like fitness professionals were personal trainers and fitness models doing like bikini competitions or fitness competitions and things like that. And while I never did a fitness competition or a bikini competition or anything like that, I definitely definitely trained and ate and supplemented like a a competitor would for sure. I was very regimented with my workout routines and my training plans and things like that with my supplementation and my nutrition and all that. So that was just kind of what I knew. I was like, okay, if I want to do fitness, that's personal training and fitness modeling. And so it was over the course of years that I was working out and kind of seeing this transformation and everything. And then I had about one year left in college or maybe like a year and a half, about a year and a half left in college. And that's when I really decided like, okay, I really want to make this my career. I had become a certified personal trainer through the National Academy of Sports Medicine and online personal personal trainers certification academy. I was training some of my um, college classmates and just training people here and there and myself. And I was like, I really love this. This is really fun. This is not just a hobby anymore. This is something that like, I really want to make a career out of. I had started doing some photo shoots, some fitness photo shoots, and just kind of really liked that. I thought that was really fun. And I was like, I'm looking kind of good. Like I could do this, you know? And so I just decided from there, okay, I'm going to finish my degree in psychology, but I'm not going to um, progress now. So I knew, okay, I could always go back to college if I wanted to get my master's and my doctorate. That was totally possible. But at the same time, I knew that I wanted to pursue fitness and I wanted to pursue a personal training, especially. And so I finished college. I did all that and very proud of that. Very happy that I finished with my bachelor's degree in psychology, but I just really transitioned from, yeah, criminals to fitness, which is like, yeah, just kind of funny. And I want to share that because it's like, it's not always the fact that you think, you know, what you want to do is what you end up doing, you know, but it's all about the path and what you learn along the way and just being open to what sets your soul on fire and what's really talking to you and speaking to you. And fitness was definitely, definitely talking to me. And so, yeah, that's what I decided. I was like, okay, I'm going to become a personal trainer. I did all the certifications, did all those things. And I remember after I graduated college, I went to Nashville. I went to Nashville, Tennessee as kind of a graduation present to self with my really good friend, Kylie. We went to Nashville. She actually, she was living there at the time. So I just went to go visit her. And I stayed uh, with her for like two weeks. We had a great time in Nashville, just, yeah, celebrating, finishing college. Um, And I remember when I was about to leave Nashville, like two days before I was gonna leave Nashville, I got a call from this guy who was like, hey, I have a personal training company. We do everything outdoor and mobile. So we go to people's houses, we go to different parks, and I'm looking for trainers to be part of my business. Would this be something that's interesting for you? So I was like, oh, that sounds really cool. You know, at this time when I graduated college, I remember um, a lot of people that I went to college with were struggling to find jobs. And I just knew that like that transition from 
college, university to workforce um, wasn't always a given that you would find a job that you liked and that, you know, worked for you. And so I remember being like, oh my gosh, so excited. I graduated college. I went on my college trip and two days before I'm supposed to go back, I already have a job. Like, this is so cool. So I was like, yeah, sure. This sounds fun. Like, let's meet when I come back. And so I met up with him and I started being a, I had kind of like a a trial session, which actually, by the way, I should really share this. The trial session sucked. The clients really didn't like my workout. They, I was so nervous. I did not know you know, if my workout was good, should I do it like this? I didn't know what they were used to. So I don't want to get into too much detail there, but I'll just preface it by saying that it was like not a really great experience and it was super awkward. And I remember during the trial, the the head trainer, he was like, hey, everybody take a lap. And he just had them run a lap around this like circle. I think it was like a quarter mile. And he kind of was like, okay, things are getting a little bit like awkward. Let me tell you a little bit about this person, what she likes, what this person, here's how I normally do things. What did you have planned for next, you know, and he really just kind of like lightened the mood there. So that was really nice. But just wanted to let you guys know that in the beginning, it wasn't the case um, that I was like super good and super motivating and knew really what I was doing at all. In fact, it wasn't until I really started with work, uh, working with people that a lot of those concepts that you learn in fitness and um, yeah, they really come to life when you start working with real life people. So, so yeah, so he invited me to be a trainer for his company and I did that for a while. And then I quickly realized like, huh, I am working for someone else and they're making a cut off of my paycheck. I can do this by myself. I'm pretty good at it. I'm a personable person. I can build a clientele. I can get new clients and I can do this on my own. And I don't have to give him part of my money. Like that's real. And so I just decided, okay, I'm going to step away from that and I'm going to do this on my own. So then I started my own personal training company and I kind of did the same thing where I was going to people's houses and doing things outdoors. In America, it's kind of tricky because like you can't really just train at a gym unless you're a trainer of that gym or you have to pay like a certain fee. And I just was starting out. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to buy a bunch of equipment. I got a TRX, a BOSU a tons of tons of weights bands we would use park benches and basically like everything that I use now in my own workout routine um, I would use that for my clients so I did that and I did that for a while and that was kind of the life I described to you about moving abroad about how I was yeah you know training people in Orange County and I was in my early 20s just really living um, the life of my dreams at that time you know living on a beach house working you know I don't know four or five hours a day going to the beach in the afternoons just yeah making good money and really loving what I was doing loving my job loving my clients and Yeah. So that's kind of where I was um, at that time. And then I remember working with another supplement company as well. And they were really awesome. One of my really good girlfriends was working with them too. And I remember us being able to, so I didn't work for that particular company specifically, but I was able to travel with them a lot. And we did a lot of fun um, expos and store activations. And we would travel all around the United States doing these activations, promoting this particular supplement company. And so I really, at that point, fell in love with traveling. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love to travel. I love being in new cities, meeting new people. This is like super fun. This is really cool. And so I kind of, uh, for probably like two years or so, did a mixture of working with this supplement company, doing my personal training and kind of traveling and then training my clients in Orange County. So it was like really, really cool. And I really loved that. But I remember, I remember being in my apartment and um, I remember praying and being like, I really, really want a job ultimately that allows me to travel the world. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know what that's going to feel like. All I know, God, is that I want to be able to travel the world and, you know, not be, not need to be in one place all the time. And so, um, yeah, I just remember praying that prayer a lot and just knowing, okay, I don't, you know, I was still traveling with the supplement company, but it wasn't like my full-time job. I wasn't employed by them. And I just knew overall, I wanted to be in fitness, health and wellness, and I wanted to travel all over the world. And that was a really big prayer of mine and a really big dream of mine. 
And so um, at that time as well, I started writing for my local newspaper, the Merced Sunstar. And I was a contributing columnist um, every, it was like every other Saturday in the beginning. And that's actually how Life Like London came about. So when I left that personal training company to start my own and um, started writing for this newspaper, I called it Life Like London because I was sharing my tips in this newspaper. And so it was really, yeah, a really interesting story because I was writing about a variety of different topics. Like I was writing about, um, yeah, my workouts, motivation, like, you know, things you can, workouts and exercises you can do at home, you know, just like basic fitness and nutrition stuff. And one time I wrote an article about my top uh, fitness apps that I used and the ones I liked the best. And I didn't mention Runtastic. So for those of you that know, I I then progressed to working with Runtastic and I want to tell you how that happened. So I um, wrote an article for the Merced Sunstar and it was like my top favorite fitness apps. And I mentioned, I think maybe five of them and I didn't mention Runtastic. And so this newspaper, it was a physical newspaper at the time. So then we still had the physical newspapers. And then it was also done on um, online. And at the time, the VP of business development in California, who was working for Runtastic, Runtastic um, is now Adidas Runtastic. And um, so you guys probably know this. If you've been following me for a while, you're very familiar with Runtastic. But the VP of business development was living in California, working for Runtastic in Austria at the time. And he had a Google alert set up in his email for fitness apps. Okay, for those of you that don't know what a Google alert is, you can set an alert in your email so that any articles that come up with that keyword are sent to you. So you can see like what's happening in the world with that keyword. And so he had um, a Google alert set in his email for fitness apps. And then he gets the email with my article from this little Merced Sunstar newspaper um, that, hey, some girl wrote about fitness apps. And not only was he did he stumble across my article, but he was actually from my same hometown. So he was also from Merced. Um, He was a bit older than me. So we didn't go to the same, like we weren't in the same class together and we went to the same high school, but not in the same year. So he was like, what? Fitness apps comes on my Google alert. And not only is it an article, but it's an article from my hometown newspaper. Who is this girl? You know, and I didn't even mention Runtastic, if you will. So he reached out to me and he was like, because, you know, at the time Runtastic, was probably like three years old, a little over three years old. So I didn't never had heard of it before. You know, I was using a different app at the time. And so he reached out to me and he's like, Hey, I just wanted to reach out to you. Like I got a Google alert, um, from your article that you wrote about fitness apps. And it's really funny because, Hey, I'm from Merced too. And like, I'm, we're from the same hometown and just, you know, what a coincidence, how weird. Um, we're looking for guest bloggers on the Runtastic blog. Would you be interested? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, what do you want me to write about? And so he um, gave me some topics and I started guest blogging for Runtastic remotely from California. So I was still working for that supplement company, traveling with them. I was still doing my personal training business. And then I was, um, yeah, creating content for Runtastic, creating blogs at first. So then he and I stayed in touch and I was kind of figured out that he was living in San Francisco. And I was like, oh, that's so weird because my best friend uh, lives in San Francisco and I'm going to go visit her this weekend. Do you want to meet up for like a coffee? And he's like, yeah, sure. That's, that would be awesome. Let's meet in person and we can have a chat. So we went to this coffee shop and I sat down with him and we just totally hit it off, had a great conversation. I mean, we're from the same hometown, so we totally vibed. And he was like, hey, I've really thought about doing a YouTube channel for Runtastic and I think you would be the perfect fit like to be a host and make videos for us. So what do you think? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, like I've never really made a ton of videos before. I did make some YouTube videos before that. Um, I did do some blogging before that. And quite frankly, I've always just kind of been, we call it a ham in the English language. Like I've always been kind of a ham in front of the camera when the camera turns on or just in general, if you put me on a stage, like I'll entertain, I will, you know, make sure that everybody's smiling and laughing and having a good time. So it was definitely not something that I was like, oh my gosh, 
I'm so afraid of this. I was kind of like, no, I can do that. Like, that sounds cool. And so, um, so yeah, that's kind of how it started. So he's like, okay, well, let me talk to the team at Rentastic. We'll send you over some camera equipment and, you know, like a t-shirt that says Rentastic so you can start making some videos, but let's keep that conversation going and we'll see how it goes. And so I was like, yeah, sure. Okay. So they sent me over a GoPro and it was like a first generation GoPro. So you couldn't even see what you were filming. You kind of had to shoot and pray and then check the, the SD card afterwards to see if you got the right shot. It was even before they had the app that went with GoPro. So this was like the first, first, first GoPro. So I got these GoPros. I got a tank top and t-shirt that said Rantastic and some sports bras and just like some gear. And I started making videos, started making videos. And that's just kind of how it started. And from there, as you guys know, from my moving abroad um, episode, I, yeah, from there, I decided to move to Austria and I worked in the Runtastic office, now the Adidas Runtastic office for four years. And then two years ago, I decided to step out of the office and still work with them, you know, in a case by case basis and start to build my own fitness and lifestyle transformation company online. And I just think it's so interesting when I go back to those prayers that I had and those that dream and vision that I had, I was like, I know that I want to be able to travel more. I know that I want to be able to like work from anywhere and just explore. And I just remember being like, please God, I just really, really want to have this life. This is what I really feel like I'm being called to. And it just kind of all worked itself out, you know? So in the beginning, I thought, you know, I wanted to be a forensic psychiatrist. And then I thought that I could only be a personal trainer and fitness model, you know? And then I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to blog for this company. Okay, I'm going to make videos for them. Okay, I'm going to pack all my stuff. I'm going to move to Austria and work in their office. Okay, now, you know, it's time to move on and do something different and, and continue to do what sets my soul on fire. And so one of the things that I can say for sure transitioned is like, I, like I said, in the beginning, I really focused on like personal training and fitness in terms of the way that it makes you look and fitness modeling in terms of the way that it makes you look. But one feeling that I know for sure came at the beginning and also is still here today is the fact that fitness makes me feel amazing. Working out and eating healthy makes me feel absolutely amazing. And there's no way anybody could ever, ever, ever take that away from me. And so now it just seems so logical that like this is my career and my hobby and what I love and what I'm passionate about. And when you can really bring those together and say like, I love what I do, I do what I love. It really feels so amazing, but it is a journey. It's not linear. There's things that go up and down and kind of all over the place. And you think, you know, you're going to do one thing and you end up doing another. And so, yeah, that's my story really of how I got into fitness and how I made fitness my career. And of course, there are a lot more details and a lot more emotions and a lot more things, you know, that we can dig in deeper to in a different episode. But I really wanted to be able to show you that like, just because you think something's going to turn out a certain way does not mean that it will. And oftentimes it turns out better than you could have ever imagined. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Self Love and Sweat, the podcast. Hey, do me a favor. Wherever you're listening to this podcast, give us a review. This really helps a lot. And share this with a friend. I'm only one person. And with your help, we can really spread the message of self-love and sweat and change more lives all around the world. I'm London Souza reminding you that you deserve a life full of passion, presence, and purpose fueled by self-love and sweat. This podcast is a Hit Spot Austria production.